What is going on Diablo 2 fans, Dobrunsky here. In today's video, I'm going to be covering all of the best bases to make the most popular and powerful room words in Diablo 2 Resurrected. I have been asked so many questions like what is the best base for Infinity, what should I be making Enigma in, Fortitude, etc. Today I'm going to cover every single optimal base, again in my humble opinion, big asterisk there. Again, always let me know in the comment section below if you guys agree or disagree with my choices. But I do hope you enjoy this video and a quick reminder before we jump in, I just want to let you guys know if you do enjoy my YouTube content, I do stream twice a week on Twitch. And I do have the link for my Twitch channel in the description below, so any follows over there would be very much appreciated. That being said, let's jump in. So today's video is going to be a fairly lengthy one. I'm going to do my best to try and explain things and kind of add some extra terminology to sort of broaden your knowledge in Diablo 2. So I do apologize in advance for this being a relatively long video, but two things I want to cover before I jump into the best room word bases is the difference between a Larzic socket quest and using the Herodric Cube recipe because this is two different methods of adding sockets to items and I will frequently mention both so I just figured it'd be good to cover how they work. So first let's start off by talking about the Larzic socket quest. This works on plain items and superior items and it works on eth or non-eth items but you can add the maximum number of sockets that a base will give you with the Larzic socket quest. So if you have a plain eth thresher and you use a Larzic quest, it'll give you five open sockets. If you have a plain F giant thresher, it will give you six open sockets. Why? Well, a thresher has a maximum number of sockets of five. Giant thresher has a maximum number of sockets of six. So that is very key to note about the Larzic quest is that it only gives you the maximum number of sockets for that base. Another plus to the Larzic socket quest though, is you can use it on superior items. So there is a few different bases that if they roll superior, you can use the Larzic quest, whereas the Herodric Cube recipe, which I'm going to talk about now, that does not work on superior bases. You can only use it on plain bases. So if you had a 15 ED Thresher, you would have to use the Larzic Socket Quest. If you had a plain F Thresher, you could use the Herodric Cube recipe. Now, the one advantage, I guess, to the Herodric Cube recipe is it will roll a varying one to the maximum number of sockets. So you could roll one, two, three, four, five or six with a giant thresher and there's an equal chance of either one whereas Larzic will only give you the guaranteed maximum number of sockets for that base. So I hope that gives you a pretty good understanding of the difference between the two because the first room word here or two room words I'm going to talk about is insight and infinity. I get asked all the time what is the best base for these two room words. So I want to first off say that you should only be using these primarily in most cases on a mercenary. There is some very niche cases where you might be using on a sorceress. I'm only going to cover a mercenary and because we're equipping it on a merc, they do not use up durability. So you want to make sure you use an F base because an ethereal base has an extra 50% enhanced damage compared to the non F counterpart. So the five bases that I recommend to use is an ethereal Colossus Fulge, ethereal Cryptic Axe, ethereal Thresher, Ethereal Giant Thresher, Ethereal Great Poleaxe. Now the advantages and disadvantages to these different bases, the Colossus Voulge will give you four open sockets if you Larzic quest it, or if you use the Roger Cube recipe, you have a 50% chance of rolling four open sockets. So it's very easy to get that base, but the disadvantage, it has a very high strength requirement. So we're talking 200 strength, which means that you may be forced to use a helmet like in Daryl's Visage or G-Face that has additional plus strength on it if your mercenary is at a lower level. I think it's like level 94 your mercenary has to be to equip a CV without any additional strength. So that's one thing to be aware of with this base. The Cryptic Axe is kind of a hybrid between the two. It rolls up to five open sockets. It has decent damage, decent attack speed. Pressure is a faster hitting base. It has lower requirements compared to a Giant Thresher, which has higher strength requirements. It's also a very fast attacking base. The Thresher and the Giant Thresher are the same attack speed, but the difference between these two in average damage, they're almost identical. So Giant Thresher is more of kind of a style points base. And then the Great Poleaxe is kind of a hybrid base between the two. It's a little bit slower than the Thresher and the Giant Thresher, but it's faster than a CV and a Cryptic Axe. So Again, it's a hybrid base. It's a little bit more challenging to roll four open sockets as well because the Giant Thresher and Great Poleaxe roll six open sockets max. Giant Thresher's five, 
five, and then four. Now, any of these bases are fine. Some people that like to push sort of a min and max approach on you might tell you that Cryptic Axe with other gear might be the best, but to be entirely honest, roll it in whatever four open socket base you get. I promise you, if you're a Javazon slinging Lightning Furies and you have an Infinity Mercenary, that most stuff will die before your Mercenary ever gets a chance to attack, so any of these four open socket bases will be completely fine for Insight or Infinity. So the next rumor that I want to cover is Spirit. Now, if you're starting off as a caster character and you roll this in a sword, you're going to want to use a sword that has a low requirement base. So typically, the two that I recommend is either a Crystal Sword or a Broadsword. They both have low strength and dex requirements, so you don't have to invest much, which allows you to invest more points into Vitality for more plus life. So here's an example of Spirit and a Crystal Sword. Now, things change a little bit when we move into equipping it in a shield. There is not a lot of shields that can roll four open sockets for characters that are not a paladin. And the first shield that can roll four open sockets that has the lowest strength requirement is a monarch. So this is the only shield base that I recommend rolling the reward spirit in. I've had a lot of people have asked me like, why don't you just roll spirit in a kite shield? You can save so much strength. Well, kite shield can only roll three open sockets. A monarch can roll four open sockets. So this is the only base that I recommend rolling the rumored spirit in for a shield. Now, the one kind of, I guess, advantage to a monarch is it can't roll anything more than four open sockets. So again, referencing that Larzic socket quest that we talked about, it will give you the maximum number of sockets, which is four. So if you're looking for an easy way to get a four open socket monarch, Larzic it, and you're good to go. Now, things change a little bit when we talk about paladin bases. They can roll plus res, and they can also roll attack rating and ED. Now, typically, if you're rolling Rumored Spirit and a Paladin, I would only be looking for plus res bases. But another thing that changes about these bases is they have varying defense and block rate rolls. Now, because a Paladin has such a high defense rate naturally from using Holy Shield, I typically recommend in most cases, you should sort of gravitate towards bases that have a higher percent chance of blocking. Now that doesn't mean that a Vortex Shield with 4 to 5 all res is a bad base, but if you're looking for the best ideal base, typically want to hunt for something like a Sacred Targe or a Sacred Rondash. So just demonstrating the differences here, you can see I have 298 defense, 39% chance to block. This is a little bit higher when you look at the stats on a Paladin, but this is a Druid Mule. But you can see progressively, 187 defense, it's going down, the block rate chance is going up, that's a Zacharoom Shield, 42%. And then 170, 45 for Kura Shield, 147, 48 for Sacred Rondash, and then 129 and 50 for Sacred Charge. So typically, the two best bases for a Spirit or a Paladin is going to be a plus all res base that's either a Sacred Rondash or a Sacred Charge. That's just for Spirit specifically. If you're trying to roll Dream or Phoenix, those two cases, even though it's not technically spirit, I know that's this segment is spirit, but those bases you could roll them in either all res bases or enhanced damage, attack rating, paladin shield bases. Either one will work, but if you're rolling spirit specifically, try to focus on a high plus res base that is either a sacred rondash or a sacred charge. So the two next room words that I want to cover is call to arms or short form CTA and then heart of the oak or short form hodo. So first let's start off with heart of the oak. I want to save you guys a little bit of trouble here. Do not roll or attempt to roll the rumored hodo in a hammer style weapon, which is within a subclass of maces. So if you look at this, this is a flail, which is a mace class, but there's also hammers that will also say they're in a mace class. Heart of the Oak will not work in a hammer, but it will work in a flail. So roll this rumored in a four open socket flail. Don't roll it in anything else to save yourself some trouble. Now for CTA or Call to Arms, it works in any type of weapon. So I recommend any low requirement base. So a couple examples here, I have a five open socket Crystal Sword, five open socket Twin Axe, and a five open socket Superior Flail. Just the best bases is anything that has a low requirement. And you'll typically pair this with a Spirit Shield to boost the overall plus skills of your Battle Lords and Battle Command. Now a quick little pro tip here is if you're using Hodo on the main hand, I recommend using something other than a flail on the off hand. So if you were to pair Hodo with a CTA and this flail, when you weapon swap back and forth, if you maybe miss a hotkey, you might be teleporting thinking you're on your Hodo side, but you'll probably be on your CTA side just because they're the same looking skin. But if you're using something like a Twin Axe or a Crystal Sword, 
you can easily distinguish between the two different weapons when you're going back and forth. It just saves you a little bit of trouble, but to sum it up, CTA in a low requirement weapon base, and then Hodo in a low requirement four open socket flail, nothing else. So the next class of rune words that I want to cover are bow specific rune words. Now, I'm going to admit I am not a big Bozon player, but typically the two most prominent bow bases for the Amazon specifically, because the Amazon has class specific bows, you're going to be looking at either a matriarchal bow or a grand matron bow. The difference between the two is the grand matron bow has a little bit more overall damage, attacks a little bit slower, matriarchal bow attacks a little bit faster, but has less overall damage. So Usually a matriarchal bow is better suited for the rumored ice and then faith is better suited for the grand matron bow. With that being said, you can interchange. If you want faster attack rate, you can go with faith and a matriarchal bow. Or if you want more leech with an Amazon that's using ice, you can go with the grand matron bow. They're both viable setups, but one important point to note about either a mat bow or a grand matron bow is that they both roll five open sockets maximum. So if you drop a 15 ED grand matron bow base, and it already doesn't have sockets. If you go to Larzakit, it is going to give you five open sockets. So that's one thing to be aware of that it can be very challenging to get that ultra rare 15 ED superior base to roll over for faith. Just keep that in mind. A couple other niche case scenario bases I want to cover is first harmony. So that's to get the Vigoror to run faster. Now, if you're going to go that route, usually that's a kind of like a pendle running thing. Use a low requirement base. If you want to roll faith on an act one mercenary you want to use the fastest attack rate non amazon bow base so the great bow is a great example and that's what i would recommend and the other room word is edge so this is typically used for gambling if you want to reduce vendor prices so tur talon am to give you 15 percent reduced vendor prices pair this with a geese grand charm it's going to greatly increase the extent of what you can gamble with your gold that you've earned from travancle or whatever so Edge is a great room word, but yeah, typically matriarchal bow or grand matron bow, and then everything else is kind of a low requirement base, unless you want to roll, roll the room word faith. In that case, just go with something like a great bow. So the next two room words I'm going to cover are Enigma and Fortitude. I cannot tell you how many times I've been asked what is the best base to roll Enigma, so I'm going to give you my two cents right now. I recommend either Mage Plate, Dust Shroud, or Archon Plate. Now there's three kind of advantages and disadvantages to using each base. So first talking about the mage plate, overall it has a little bit less defense, but it has a very low requirement to equip. So 55 strength, so you can roll enigma in this. If you have your base strength plus a decent torch and any, you can almost equip enigma and get the plus strength from the room word without actually investing any strength. So you can get these really crazy hammered in builds that have like literally not a single strength point invested and it's all because they rolled rumored in a mage plate so it's definitely a good base although it has a little bit less defense some people argue defense is not that important but it's one thing to note that you will have a lower defense enigma the advantage of a dust route is it's kind of an in-between base so it doesn't have as high a strength requirement as an archon play but it does have a higher defense versus a mage play now the reason why i selected this base is i wanted to talk a little bit about superior bases they can be very expensive to repair, so I typically don't recommend rolling Fortitude or Enigma in a superior base because it's going to be very expensive to repair. Now the other base that I wanted to cover is an Archon Plate. So it has a higher strength requirement compared to a Dust Shroud, so we're looking at 77 here to 103. But it has more durability charges, which can be important if you're rolling in a superior base, although I recommend you don't do it. But it does have a higher defense typically than a dust shroud. The reason this is 533 compared to 498 is because we have a superior base versus a non superior base. But typically, Archon Plate is kind of the pinnacle of a high defense base for rolling Enigma. I don't recommend really going anything past an Archon Plate because there's a huge diminishing return. So, just to exemplify that, I have a Sacred Armor here that has a 572 defense. Compared to, this is a relatively low defense Archon Plate. So we're talking difference of like 170 here. But look at the strength requirement, 232. So don't roll Enigma and anything like this. Just stick to an Archon Plate if you want defense. Now moving on to Fortitude. Kind of the same thing. Although you cannot roll Fortitude in a Mage Plate. Because the maximum number of sockets that can roll in this base is 3. So Fortitude, you need 4 open sockets. So Dust Shroud or Archon Plate are both really good bases. Typically, I recommend an Archon Plate. 
just because it, it again has more durability charges meaning it won't wear out as quickly because you're going to be right in the fray attacking monsters because fortitude is a melee rune word so usually i recommend something like an archon plate worm hides and stuff like that can be used as well the disadvantage to them compared to an archon plate is again don't have as much durability now if we move on to fortitude for a mercenary Unfortunately, in Diablo 2 Resurrected, we cannot ebug armors anymore, so just look for a really high defense ethereal armor. Superior would give you the most right. amount of defense, and mercenaries don't use up durability, so a 4 open socket, 15 ED superior high defense base would be ideal. If you can't get that, anything that's plain and F is fine. So this is an Archon plate, 726 defense, versus a 666 defense lacquer plate, so that's another important point to note about armor bases in general is they do have a large varying spread of defense. That's why you have scenario like this where a lacquer plate, which can roll potentially more max defense, is actually lower because it rolled more on the minimum scale compared to this that rolled higher on the uh, defense scale. So Fortitude, any really good F armor. And then for Enigma, Mage Plate, Dust Shroud, or Archon Plate, and then the same for Fortitude except you cannot roll fortitude Good in a mage plate just because of that three open socket restriction. So for the last segment of this video, I want to cover Breath of the Dying, Brief, Last Wish, and a few other kind of niche case uses for bases. So first, starting off with Breath of the Dying, the key thing about this rune word is you want to make sure you roll it in an ethereal base. So anything like a Warpike, Berserker Axe, Ghost Spear, Colossus Blade will work. Now Breath of the Dying works in any weapon type, so if you want to go like a crazy whirlwind barbarian, you want to have style points, you could go Colossus Blade, Ghost Spear, or Warpike will work for a mercenary, Berserker Axe will work for a zealer, or even a Frenzy Barb or Whirlwind Barb. Important point to note about a Berserker Axe is it is the highest single damage you can get on a one-handed weapon, so that's really important. Next couple bases I want to cover is six open socket phase blade. This is the only base that I would recommend rolling the rumored last wish in. You can also roll last wish in a berserker axe, but you're going to chew up durability. Phase Blade does not have any durability, so it's the only base that I would recommend rolling Last Wish in if you want to roll that super expensive rune word. Another really good base is a 5 open socket Phase Blade, and I suggest rolling Grief in this rune word only. Again, similar to Last Wish, you can roll Grief in a Berserker Axe, but you're going to be chewing up through durability. The advantage to Phase Blade in any weapon base is you have no durability, so I recommend rolling Grief in this rune word. Oath is another really powerful rumor that you can roll in, I believe, maces, swords, and axes. So something like this cryptic sword, you could Larsic it as a maximum of four open sockets. Elrog Blade, uh, any other like Berserker Axe, if you can get four open sockets, is going to be a good choice for the rumored Oath. And moving on to some more other kind of niche case uses of bases. So I have Kingslayer here and a four open socket phase blade. This is a really good rumor to use for Ubers. It has minus target defense. Crushing Blow and Open Wounds, just prevent monster heal. Just a good, powerful rune word. Relatively cheap, Mal, Um, Gull, and Foul. A couple other niche case uses here. I have a 6 Isted Phase Blade. This is typically used on a Pit Zerker. And then I have a 6 Lambda Crystal Sword for a Gold Fine Mercenary. Kind of like niche case uses of 6 Open Socket, either Phase Blades or Crystal Swords. And I also have, here's another example of Oath. So this was like a one-handed weapon, or if you wanted to roll Oath in a two-handed weapon. And then I also have the rune word Death. This is a very powerful rune word that works in any five open socket, F, sword, or axe. So something like a Colossus Blade is a really good use of this rune word. Five open socket, Colossus Blade, you can't roll Breath of the Dying. You can roll a very powerful rune word like Death, Hell, L, Vex, Ord, and Gull. And this has 357 to 706 damage. Mana Leech, 50 Crushing Blow, Deadly Strike based on character level. A very powerful kind of niche case example of a base. So that basically wraps up today's video, guys. I know it was a pretty long one. I could have made it even longer if I talked about every single possible min and max socket and Larza Questing and a Roger Cube sockets and stuff like that. But I figured that this video was long enough as it, as it is. But I do hope you guys enjoyed it you found it useful again let me know in the comment section below if you guys think i missed any major base or rumor i tried to cover a lot of meta stuff i do always read the comments and as always if you guys get the real like on this video share it and even consider subscribing if you're new to my channel i post new weekly content on youtube and i do stream twice a week on twitch 
20 follows on Twitch or subs on YouTube would be amazing. Other than that, guys, hope you have a fan-frickin-tastic day, and I'll catch you on my next video or live stream. Peace out.